when you're coming out to a pond to do your initial uh, environmental assessment and source inspection, some of the things you want to make note of is, is your pond lined? This one happens to be lined. It was lined for the purpose of retaining the most amount of water, but it also reduces the contact of the water in there with the sediment that's used to create the pond. So sometimes on smaller ponds that are earthen, you might have redistribution of some of those sediments when the pond is turned over and you're adding more water. So that's something you're going to write down on your environmental assessment form. Whether or not the pond is fenced. These fences are put here to keep out not just animals, but people. And those are two things that are probably a good idea to keep out of your pond. You're not going to be able to keep out birds. We get questions about those all the time you will likely have birds in there. So on your environmental assessment, one of the things is whether or not there's wildlife present. That's something to make note of. You're also going to want to look at how big the pond is. There's a space on there to talk about capacity, and that gives us an idea of how much water gets turned over. Then we understand how regularly that water is being flushed out and used. Now walking around here, you don't have to have a lined pond. You don't have to have a fence around it. You just want to make note if you do or not. And looking in the environment around here, we want to understand what are the nearby and immediately adjacent land uses. So we're standing here at the bottom of a hill. I'd be interested in knowing what was happening up this hill. Right now it looks like kind of wild scrubland area. It's not under cultivation. There's no obvious signs of wildlife, but I guarantee you there's a lot of little critters that are living out there. There's no livestock that I see up the hill. As far as I know, there's not a dog walking path. So these are the things we're gonna write down on our assessment. Then we look around all the way around the pond and we see, oh, we've got another covered commodity. Maybe that's my covered commodity right across the pond. But again, we are downhill of that location. So anything that's happening up on the hill has the possibility of running downhill and into the pond. Maybe your pond's up on top of the hill, so it's less of an issue. But something like this that's down in a swale, that's what we want to pay attention to. We also know this is big like wood stack, wood pile area. It's probably old orchard that got piled up down there. Those are great havens for wildlife. So we'd want to know that that is there, that we've got this very distinctive habitat type that's there. You can make notes. There's room on the assessment forms, like general observations. I guarantee you there are a lot of rodents living in that wood pile right there. A lot of rodents can bring in other types of predators as well. So that's something to keep an eye on. This one happens to be fenced, but it's not going to keep rodents out. It's small enough. It will keep things like deer out, obviously. Um, it's fairly straightforward. There's not many things that you need to be worried about with your pond. Um, oh, one thing you might want to consider is whether or not you treat your pond for algae. Though currently there's not any acceptable uh, treatments according to the EPA for um, bacteriological contamination, uh, we do know that bluestone copper treatments of your pond are great algicides and they also happen to be great bactericides. So if you are legally using copper sulfate in your ponds for the purpose of reducing the amount of algae or snails or other kinds of vegetation in your pond and doing that the way the EPA prescribed, it's also an effective bacterial side and you're going to want to write that down because that's the reason that your hunts are going to be zero.